plenty of rave reviews around. Sometimes they are so positive, I doubt if it's a serious review. So instead I will start with the negatives and then end with the positives. Problem is, it's hard to find genuine problems with this bike. I couldn't find any real known issues. Eventually I focused on the engine, which is derived from the MT-09 road bike, but it was introduced in 2015 and it seems they worked out all the problems years ago. This stands in contrast to all the reported issues on the KDM 790 Adventure, arguably the main competitor for the T7. It seems the problems with the T7 are more around getting it to suit the individual rider. For example, the fixed windscreen means you will probably get a lot of wind noise once you are taller than around six foot. The same with the ergonomics. The seat height, short riders will still find this quite high compared to say the Triumph Tiger 800. And yet riders over six foot will feel quite cramped. Although there's an optional rally seat that sits higher, which apparently resolves this. In standing, a lot of taller riders, like me, also find the bars too low, so they add risers and also roll the bars forward to enlarge the cockpit. If you like to stand, you will also need to remove the rubber inserts on the foot pegs. More aggressive riders can be disappointed by the lack of real punch from the engine. Personally, I think this is a matter of taste. Quick takeoffs will see the front wheel coming up in the first few gears, and it does start singing nicely at higher revs. And the power delivery is brilliant for off-road riding. Plenty of traction, no surprises, super smooth. Aftermarket specialists claim their ECU remappering can give big power gains. I suspect most owners will not need it. Again, there are occasional complaints about the suspension from aggressive riders, and some suspension tuners are saying owners do need to come in and get their bikes set up correctly. But I suspect the vast majority of riders will find the stock suspension is fine. Many owners just ramp up the preload on the rear shock and find that's all they need to do. Aggressive riders may want to get some work done, the plush suspension will definitely start bottoming out as you ride it harder. There were reports of the early T7 models being snatchy at low revs, but remapping the ECU solved this. There were no problems with this 2021 model. If you are into electronics, all you get is ABS and it's just on off, no adjustments. The T7 will definitely disappoint you if you want all the electronic bells and whistles. If you like simplicity, <laughs> you will love it. For true long distance riding, you will probably find the fuel tank is a bit small at 16 litres, although good fuel economy does stretch this out well. What do we like? The price. This is where the T7 shines. It is significantly cheaper than its main competitors and this leaves a few thousand dollars to spend on mods that will easily make it the equal of the other bikes. The Suzuki V-Strom 650 is a lot cheaper but it's really in a different class and lacks the off-road abilities of the T7. The weight. Yamaha has done a good job of keeping the weight down for a twin-cylinder engine. It's around the same as the KDM 790 and a bit lighter than the Triumph Tiger 800. And <laughs> it's lighter than the KLR 650 single. It's great to see a twin cylinder that is not morbidly obese. Riders report dropping weight with these mods. On road was great fun. It turned so well, it was hard to believe it has a 21 inch front wheel up front. With the right tyres, you could easily embarrass a lot of sports bikes. The brakes were a tad soft for spirited road riding, but of course, they came into their own off-road. And off-road handling. The T7 actually does feel quite light until you get down to very low speeds. <laughs> no matter what tricks Poltares can do on a T7, you really start to feel the weight if you get into serious off-road riding. 
But of course, that's when you should be looking at lighter single cylinder bikes. Also, if you push the bike hard, you will find the limits of that suspension quickly. But as mentioned, the T7 is so cheap, you could easily get the suspension sorted and still have cash left over. So in conclusion, I was really hoping to find a pile of things wrong with this bike <laughs> to counter all the glowing reviews. But for the money, I think it's a great package and it's actually made in Japan. Or if you live in Europe, your T7 is manufactured in France. This contrasts with the KDM 790 Adventure now being made in China and a significant number of known issues cropping up for quite a few 790 owners. Have you ridden a T7? Do you own one? Keen to hear your thoughts, including any problems you encountered or mods you've made.